Well, welcome into a daily editorial here on the KE Report. I am chatting with Jordan Royburn, founder and editor of The Daily Gold. And Jordan, I have to say, I'm glad to hear that you are feeling a little bit better. And that's why I can bring you back on the show and get an update on the overall metals or precious metals area. We're going to start with GDXJ. We haven't talked a whole lot about the juniors ETF, but you've noticed something within the overall breadth that has you fairly encouraged. Can you please share? Sure. And, you know, one thing I did, Corey, in the last uh, week or two is I, I don't want to say created a new indicator, but I specifically just wanted to look at the top 35 stocks or so in, in the ETF and look at these breadth indicators and see, you know, what percent are closing above the 200 day moving average, the 50 day and the 20 day moving average. And because before I was tracking a basket of juniors, but it wasn't that closely aligned with GDXJ. So I put together these new breadth indicators specifically just for GDXJ. And interestingly, in the last couple of days, a percentage of, of those 35 that traded above the 200 day was all the way up at 71%. Um, and that's the highest since summer of 2017. And another uh, indicator for that, which I haven't released yet, but I've looked at the data, is a percentage that is, has made a new 52-week high. And a couple of days ago, that was 16%. Now, back in the summer of 2017, it peaked around 19%. So other than, other than that time, if we're going back the last seven or eight years or so, other than the summer of 2017 and that period in, in 2016, uh, breadth for GDXJ is the strongest that it's been again excluding those two points over the last you know five six seven years whatever you want to call it and so looking at gdxj right now i mean the percentage above the 50 day and the 200 day those are around 100 percent. so those are very strong and um when you see those readings and you see the percentage of stocks in the 200 day moving average that's that's climbing quite high i mean it's already at 71 percent. that that's a good bullish sign i mean if that percentage would have petered out around 50% or 60% or so, you know, that, that, that would kind of be an indication of a downtrend. So we're not seeing that. And I mean, in addition to that, Corey, one thing I noted for, you know, GDXJ and also GDX, I think I wrote this two or three weeks ago. I, I, I noted that they rallied up to their 400 day moving average or their 80 week moving average. And then they pulled back at the beginning of, uh, 2019. And if you look at the last five or six years, it's clear that that moving average, again, the 400 day or the 80 week has been a perfect indicator of the trend. And, you know, what happened in the last couple of weeks? Well, the miners, after that little pullback, they just exploded above the moving averages. I mean, that's that's real bullish action. And again, we haven't seen that for quite a while. Looking at the GDXJ chart, you know, what happened in 2016 is we exploded above that moving average. Then we had that big sell off in the second half of 2016. And the bottom in December 2016 came right around the 400 day. And then we had the rally. And then basically the market spent the next uh, 18 months or so. I mean, it, it, it was trading range bound, but generally it was just weakening relative to the 400 day. And it failed at the 400 day several times in 2018 before we had the sell-off at the end of summer. So again, and the same thing for GDX, you know, they just in the last couple of weeks, they've exploded above that moving average resistance. So, I mean, that's, that's bullish. That's real bullish action that we haven't seen in a while. Okay. So essentially more money flowing into a more broad number of stocks within just even the juniors. But when you look at say like a weekly chart, Yes, GDXJ has recovered from the low in November up to where it is right now. It's about 25% move up, but we're still very much kind of in that middle of that range that we were in all through 2017 and 2018. Do I need to kind of put those aside, put those behind me and look at more of the shorter term charts to maybe predict where this market is going? To me, it just seems like hearing all this positivity about the overall breadth, I would expect GDXJ to be higher. Well, that's a great point, but the thing about breadth is breadth is a leading indicator. And so watching this very closely, and the same for GDX and the Huey, the strengthening breadth that we've seen over the last couple of weeks, the point is we have not seen this 
over the last you know, 18 months or 24 months. We've not seen this kind of breadth. So it's telling us that essentially if we see any more strength and breadth from here, like over the coming days or in the next week or two, I mean, that that's a signal that this move is going to continue to the upside and carry. So it's a great question. But when we're looking at breadth, we're looking at how, you know, how sustainable is this move? You know, is, is there is breadth improving? Is it str- getting stronger? And those indicators that I'm looking at, they're saying yes. And so, you know, these breadth indicators are really a leading indicator. So they're they're telling me that we're likely to see more upside here in the short term. Okay. Now, in terms of the breadth, though, it doesn't sound like we're at an extreme level right now. So as you just said right there, we could see even some more upside. It doesn't sound like you're in the camp of some of these others, other people saying that this run has lasted a little while and we're due for some sort of a pullback. You want to see still a move higher, even a more of a pop higher. Yeah, what's really interesting is when a market is changing, when the primary trend is is changing, you're and it's also true for sentiment and 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 you know momentum indicators like RSI. When a market is is changing its primary trend, your old parameters for what's oversold and overbought, they change. And people kind of, they look at the market with the same, like if you're looking at the miners right now and, and you're looking at it you know, with the same frame of the past two years, then of, of course you're going to look at it and think, well, you know, this is starting to get overbought. You know, this should probably correct. And I mean, it's possible it may happen, but my point is, you know, we're seeing signs that the trend is shifting to a real bull market trend here. And if that's the case, then sooner rather than later, we're going to see the market continue to move higher and, re- and register overbought readings, whether you're looking at momentum and sentiment. And, and breadth is also telling us that that's likely to happen. And it's just really important to understand that when the market trend really shifts and, and it's testing and and attempting to break a key level or, you know, break a downtrend line. Usually when it makes that break, you know, it, it, it could be happening with sentiment more bullish than it usually is or with momentum stronger than it usually is. I mean, one thing that's interesting is if you look at the gold COT and you just look at the last 20 years, and if you look at what these years that gold had really important breakouts, like the end of 2005, uh, 2007, 2009, the, the COT, this, the net spec position in gold during all those breakouts was already quite high. It was telling you at those breakout points, well, sentiment's too bullish here. It's probably going to pull back. But nevertheless, the market still made these huge breakouts and, and huge moves after the breakouts. So what I'm saying here is, is, is if indeed gold and gold stocks are beginning a new primary trend here, you have to look at you have to look at things differently. You can't apply the same lenses as you would have over the past couple of years. Uh, so when the market moves into a new trend, momentum is going to get much stronger than you would have thought, and sentiment is going to get more, much more bullish than you would have thought. Hey, that totally makes sense, Jordan. And it's actually something we touched on a few weeks ago when gold or when GDX was getting into an overbought territory. Everybody was saying it's due for a pullback. And fair enough, it is usually due for a pullback when it gets into those levels. But it was the first time in years that it had gotten overbought. So it does at least show a little bit more of that bullish trend of a market that can get overbought. Quite frankly, bull markets, as you just said, get into overbought territory on a more regular basis. It was nice to finally see something in the gold sector get to an overbought level. Can we also talk about GDX as well? You were just looking at this advanced decline line, something that you and I have been talking about. You kept on pointing out over the last few months that the advanced decline line still wasn't showing an overly bullish picture. What's an update on that now? Um, it, it's a it's a great question, Corey, because actually a couple weeks ago, the advanced decline line, there was one point where it made a tiny positive divergence. And in addition to that, I just noticed, I was looking at it this morning, and yesterday, the advanced decline line made a higher high, despite GDX over the last few days, basically going sideways. So we have another positive divergence in the advanced decline line, which we're looking at a very short span of time. So the implication is a very short term over the coming days that GDX should make a higher high. Now, looking at the big picture, you know, since we had the pullback 
in January, that little pullback before the strength of the last couple of weeks, the GDX advanced decline line was still not that strong, but it, it's really exploded higher over the last couple of weeks. So it's confirmed the strength that we've had in, in this move over the last couple of weeks. It's been, you know, more so than what we've seen. It's been a broad based move in the sector. And that's also reflected in the other breadth indicators. Like I'm looking at, or like looking at the, the Huey um, as a proxy for, for breadth in the sector for, for the large caps and GDX, because it it's only gold producing companies. It doesn't have the royalty companies. And I'm looking at those breadth indicators as of a couple of days ago and you know, percentage of the Huey that was above the 20 day and the 50 day, it hit 100%, uh, which is, you know, it, it's hit that set, you know, a few times in the last couple of years. But in addition to that, if you look at the percent of, percentage of the 200 day, as of a couple of days ago, it hit 52%, which isn't that great. However, that's a one year high as far as that indicator. Uh, and so, I mean, to, to get to a one year high in GDX, you'd have to be trading, I think, at 24. And I'm watching that very closely because the peaks in that over the last couple of years have been, I want to say, 60 or 65 percent. So that's something I want to see over the next you know, couple of weeks. Are we going to see the percentage of the Huey trading above the 200 day moving average? Can we see that trade above 60, 65 percent? That would be another bullish signal. And again, the advanced decline line is showing a tiny positive divergence here. That's very good for the uh, very short term. And just the recent move that we've seen in GDX, you know, from 20 to 22.50, that's been accompanied by very strong breadth. And we haven't seen that very strong breadth previously in, in, in the strength that we've seen in the last couple months. We talked about GDXJ. It's, it's a similar picture for GDX, uh, you know, very strong breadth on this move. And the implication is that, you know, over the coming days in the next week or two, we're more likely than not to see higher prices uh, in the miners. Okay, so I guess in summary, it really sounds like this recent rally in the kind of some of the background metrics has done a lot more than just show that it's been almost a dead cat bounce or one of these bottom one of these bounces off a bottom it's showing many more bullish signs now of course we still need some more follow through on that but this is the first time in a long time that we've seen these kind of background indicators be so bullish haven't we exactly that's an excellent point now and i'll just give you one caveat Corey. So well, before I give you the caveat, I will say, you know, fundamentally, we've been talking about this for, you know, nearly the past 12 months, maybe the past nine or 10 months that, you know, the trigger for a lot of great moves and bottoms and gold stocks is the Fed moving away from uh, rate hikes to rate cuts. And the market is pricing in, is pricing in that the Fed is done. Like the market is expect it's now pricing in a rate cut for 2020. So the market is pricing in that the Fed's done, although the Fed is saying, you know, we're still going to hike once or twice this year. The caveat would be, obviously, the Fed being able to hike this year. In addition to that, gold in real terms is very strong. It's been the strongest it's been as far as real terms, just going back to 2016. No other, the other points, it's gotten up to the wall of resistance. It, those other points in real terms, gold was not as strong as it is now. Because remember, those last couple times it got up there that was basically all driven by the weak dollar not the case now gold is very strong in real terms but the one caveat is gold against the stock market in, in the last couple of weeks that has not made a higher high along with uh you know gold in nominal terms and gold in real terms against stocks bonds currencies and commodities so that is really the one thing that's missing gold against the stock market that we need to see gold against the stock market make a higher high now it if and when that happens, Corey, then it's over for the gold bears. When that happens, that we're going to see gold make an explosive breakout move. So that's the only thing. If I was going to make a bearish case, that's the only thing that's holding me back right now. Um, just gold against the stock market. Because you, you can't have a big breakout move in gold in a bull market if the stock market is going up alongside gold. That's just that's never happened before in gold's history. Now, it's possible that can happen, at, you know, in the years ahead after gold's already broken out and made a big move. But um, 
for, for the breakout in the real beginning of this bull market, we need to see gold strongly outperform the stock market. And again, that's the only thing that's missing here. And that's the only thing that would give me a little pause. But nevertheless, Corey, I mean, you, you put it very, very well. Looking at everything, I mean, we're, we're seeing evidence really uh, accumulating in favor of the bullish outlook here. Finally, I think a lot of the gold bugs would say, but it's interesting to hear now just how bullish and some of those indicators that you are seeing as being bullish, because as I said, quite frankly, over the last couple of years, we just weren't seeing that set up. Now, finally, after that drop in the end of summer, we might be climbing our way into that bull market that we're all waiting for, but it's been a long process and there still needs to be a little bit more confirmation. Jordan, great chatting with you. Thanks again for your time. If anybody wants more information on Jordan's newsletter, I highly recommend it. Go to The Daily Gold. I will also post a link below this interview. Jordan, thanks for your time today.